Hello everybody, my name is Petr Koutny, today I have for you another brilliant chess game. Let's watch how great, fantastic and famous Viktor Korchnoi is going to lose with white pieces his game against women. With black pieces this game played Jana Jackova. Jana Jackova used to be one of the strongest Czech chess woman player of 21st century and I am happy to show you her game because Looks like uh, Viktor Korchnoi was without any chance to survive or to dream for a draw. Yes, um, before you will see all this game, it's fair to say big, big thank you to all women playing chess because women are beauty of our lives and of course are beauty of chess games as well. So. For one more time, Viktor Korchnoi playing with white pieces and Jana Jackova playing with black pieces 2009. And after e4, knight e4, white is losing a pawn and I'm asking where is white compensation because this position is going to be really simplified and I still don't understand where is a white compensation for this pawn? Okay, uh, white took on e7, black on c3, white on uh, d8, and probably here I will take on a d1 as happened, but maybe here it's uh, good to take not on d8 but to play queen g4. Yes, I think that here. Even here, uh, black's got a good position, but with queens on board, still uh, white has a chance to dream for a compensation. Say queen g7, take take, and uh, d6. Yes. What do you think about these double pawns c3 and c4? They are weak, they are bad, and they are target for black's attacks. So. Maybe this position is unhealthy for white, but um, it's up to your choice if you prefer to play this position or if you like this position. Because Victor Korchnoi took on d8 and maybe he thought, okay, I'm playing with women, I can beat her anyway, anywhere and anytime, but he was wrong. Because, you know, she took on b2 and there's a second pawn and my second question, where is his compensation? Because I can't see any kind of counterattack, any kind of threats. And what I can see is position where white is playing without two pawns. Okay, a4 and uh, maybe this knight is in a danger. Yes. But uh, it's not in a danger after move d5 because c4 square it's a nice square for this knight. And after this exchange and knight c4 they take. And uh, what to say about this position? Two extra pawns say that the biggest advantage to have material advantage is in a way that we have chance to give you back a material for another advantage. So say uh, black has chance to give back one pawn and even after this sacrifice black will have one extra pawn. What it's usually enough to play for a victory. So I think that white is suffering. Yes, maybe uh, white's position looks like more active, more aggressive, but material is material and doesn't matter that with white pieces this game is playing Viktor Korchnoi. Doesn't matter that with black pieces this game is playing women because women know how to play chess and now we have the right example how women are playing chess. So check on e2 and she came to f8. Uh, the plan is to play h6, g8 and h7 and of course then this rook will be free. So king d2, knight c6 and maybe here 
uh, white is hoping for compensation. Maybe white doesn't believe that these double pawns are strong, but because these pawns are sitting on the light squares, they are hard to attack, they are hard to kill, and they are hard to win. And for this reason, if black has got enough time to set up her position, Black's got beautiful chances to beat chess legend and that's exactly the chess through. Doesn't matter who is your opponent. Doesn't matter if your opponent is Magnus Carlsen or Gary Kasparov. What's matter is a position and if you got winning position, you have to win your winning position. So bishop e6 makes a sense, h6 of course, g8 and h7 and after rook b8 black is back black is back with her pieces and now black pieces are challenging white pieces and still i'm asking where is white's compensation for two pawns i don't believe that white is happy and i'm absolutely sure that black knows that she's playing for victory. She don't want to accept a draw. She don't want to anything else than to beat Viktor Korchnoi. And that's the best way how to be a strong chess player. Don't be worried. Don't, don't afraid of losing against a stronger opponent. Just play your best moves and believe in yourself. So now Rubik 6 and rook c8, g5, and now rook d8. Okay, as I told you, one pawn doesn't matter if um, black's got another extra pawn. So the biggest advantage to have material advantage is a chance to give back one of them. Okay, I mean, one of these two pawns are falling down or is falling down, but it doesn't matter still. Material advantage is making smile on her face. So rook d3 and now check. And it's a surprise how white king is now in a danger. So looks like um, king walking in a park where uh, too many dogs are hunting him. And you know, check, check. And now maybe it's a stronger to go king g7 and ask white king if there is not checkmating net. Maybe after bishop f2 there is mate in 1, 2 and 3. Yes, of course, there was a weak variation, but still that's a threat. Doesn't matter what's happened because she played c3 and she's going to play one of the most stronger chess plan ever. If you have pass pawn, just push your pass pawn as far as possible. That's the best way how to beat your opponent. So now check and with extra piece, this game has no reason to go on. I hope that you enjoyed this game. It was nice to see how Janáckova outplayed great and famous Viktor Korčnoi. And that was another reason um, to remember Viktor Korčnoi as a chess legend. Because, of course, he is chess legend and he wrote chess history. So, I am happy to show this game. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you saw something interesting and if yes, Feel free and press like or press follow and made my day. This game was great. Thank you very much for your time, attention, likes and follows. And I hope I'm going to see you here next time in our another interesting, famous, immortal, beautiful chess game. See you soon. Take care. Bye bye.